Hi everyone. So um, welcome to DCU Postgraduate Information Week. Uh, my name is Renat Verbruggen and I intend going through the MSc in Computing in particular as the offering that we have at our uh, postgraduate, taught postgraduate courses within the School of Computing. But in order to get there, I wanted to give you an overview of who the School of Computing are, what DCU is as well. So let's have a look. So as I say, I'm Renato Bruggen and I'm the director, uh, the academic chair of the MSc in Computing. And that's across all of the majors as I'll explain to you in a few minutes. So in terms of what I want to uh, capture, I want to give you an overview of the School of Computing. I want to give you a little bit of a heads up about teaching during COVID-19 because I know people are worried about that and have been worried about it. Uh, a very short introduction to our undergraduate programs and then in much more detail, a discussion of our postgraduate both at thought and research programs. And then some information about the research expertise that we have across the school and why that helps us to develop such good courses. So who are the School of Computing? Well, we are within Dublin City University and as part of it, last year, DCU was um, found to be the best university for graduate employment in Ireland. And as part of that, the School of Computing has a very, very high graduate employment rate. So we're quite a large school and we have top of the range computing facilities across multiple floors within our dedicated school. And our degree programs are highly recognized among employers, both undergraduate and postgraduate. And our graduates are highly sought after in industry because of this. So how does it work? Well, we're driven by excellence in research and teaching. So the research that is undertaken by the staff of the school and the findings that come from that are fed back into the teaching as part of the ongoing editing of mo modules that are provided. And then the feedback that occurs through teaching helps us set up research projects. So our teaching is both at undergraduate and postgraduate and our research is world-class with multiple specialisms within the school. In terms of research collaborations, I'll mention later on about the particular uh, centers of excellence we have, but that's a kind of a brief, as in we couldn't put all of the logos there, but a, a brief explanation of the type of companies and the location of those companies with which the school is involved. So everything from quite a lot of connections to Huawei in South Korea, all the way over to work with Microsoft in the States and multiple. So each of those little numbers are the number of projects we've been involved in, multiple projects across the whole of Europe. We also have three researchers that are in the top 20 in Ireland with uh, Professor Andy Way, who is the head of our ADAPT Centre, our Centre for Content Generation and Localization originally, but now it's very much based on machine learning and machine translation. And um, Professor Alan Smeaton, who was originally the director of our Insight Data Analytics Centre, but is also a gold medal winning researcher within the whole area of information retrieval. And Professor Garrett Jones, who again is an award-winning researcher within the school. So in terms of some statistics from a research point of view, we've approximately 90 funded PhD students, 50 plus postdoctoral researchers, and 211 research spaces across our, our schools. We have four national research centers located within these buildings and three centers for research training and 30 research active staff within the school. 
So we have an annual intake of about 30 fully funded PhD students. So that's an unusual role, except in computing, of course, that we fund the PhD students to be here. So typically a four year funding would be at about 19,000 euro per annum. There is a supervisory team of research active staff and their dedicated research spaces for each PhD and postdoctoral researcher. There's also a DCU researcher career framework to help along towards whatever the PhD student wishes to do afterwards. And within the PhD, there's an expectation of following a number of modules, typically from our MSc program, in order to upscale. And there are also opportunities for additional income from tutorials and periodic lectures. Some of this, thankfully, is in the past, but I thought we would at least mention how we took to teaching during COVID-19 and how that has changed now in Ireland. So we would really plan for significant on-campus activities from September. We had in the past, both in-class and hybrid lectures. In other words, when things were quite bad, we had online lectures. But then what we tended to do was to move as soon as it was available from a public health point of view, we moved back to in-class because we find them much more rewarding and rewarding for students in terms of lectures, etc. But there are extensive notes and uh, material available online in all cases. But we expect in September to have on-campus laboratories and tutorials associated with the MSc. And we would expect to go back to that model of having as much interaction, et cetera, within the classes in on campus. And the practicums as well. Next year, we would expect that the practicum supervision would again happen subject to the supervisor associations, it will happen in person and the assessments will happen in person. So we have um, a number of degree programs in our undergraduate um, courses. We have a business computing course, which kind of speaks for itself. We have a computer science um, course, which again, uh, you can imagine in, includes a lot of programming and a lot of applications work. And then we have a data science course, which, as you can imagine, is specifically aimed at um, the fundamentals of data science. And then what many of you might be involved in will be our master's courses. So we have an MSc in computing, which have specialisms or majors, if you like, in artificial intelligence, in data analytics, in secure software engineering, and we're proposing to have a natural language processing um, major as well from the coming September. That's subject to approval, but so far so good. We, we have uh, achieved that. So they're all full time. Um, and then from a part time point of view, we have some courses, which I, I'll go to in more detail later on which are part funded by the Irish government. Um, one is blockchain and distributed ledger technology. And um, the other is financial technology and innovation. So what do our postgraduate thought programs look like? So our MSc in computing, as I say, offers a, a choice of majors. And the idea really is to equip graduates with a range of up-to-date skills in their particular major with an emphasis on being able to develop software and systems that will deliver solutions to the business and economy. Like I said, full-time and part-time in data analytics, AI and secure software engineering and part-time in blockchain, distributed ledger technology and financial technology and in So the entry requirements, which will be um, available obviously online at that link below, you must hold a second class honors degree or higher in computer science, computing or computer applications. And then from an international point of view, 
for those candidates who are not non-native speakers, well, then they must satisfy the university or competency. There are multiple um, ways to do that, all the way from IELTS through, through various things. And uh, the information is all available on the website. But I think it's also important to say that to thrive on this course, you must be a very competent programmer. And by programmer, we mean in Python, Java, or the various strands of C, C++, or C Sharp. And be comfortable with advanced mathematical concepts because across the programs, you will be looking at mathematical ideas and statistics, machine learning, mathematical modeling, computation, etc. So if you're not the type of person who is very happy with your programming or very happy with your mathematics, then this program is probably not for you. So what does it look like? <coughs> so in general, the model we use is a one full calendar year model. What that means is we begin in September and we finish in the following August. Okay. So that means we have a semester one up until Christmas or the break. Semester two from January to April followed by exams. And then we have a practicum, which is required. I'll talk a little bit more about the practicum in a minute. But this kind of model exists in all cases. So what we're looking at at the moment is the major in artificial intelligence, okay? MCM and AI. So full-time, you would have four modules in the first semester. Each of these modules would be delivered on campus here. Um, and then within those modules, there would be continual assessment, typically from 25% of the final grade up. And within that, each module will also be assessed by a terminal exam before the holidays in December. As you can see, the credits, the credits are scores which are associated with uh, the European so-called Bologna model of credits, so that they're transferable, or at least they're, you know, the um, equivalent will exist in other courses all across Europe. So if you can see, that means we've got seven and a half by four or 30 credits in the first semester. Everything in the first semester is core. In other words, there's no choice. And also we have this belief within the school and within the MSc that the MSc is a fundamentals course. So it's really important to do fundamental work. In other words, to have the basis on which to work later on. So this isn't a use tools kind of approach. That's why we have statistical data analysis within it, okay? That's why we have foundations of AI within it. And then we go on to the second semester and you have another four modules that you have to take. But in this case, there's a choice between statistical machine translation and mechanics of search. In the, again, after all of those courses, there will be 25% within them at least, and then there will be a terminal exam. Typically now that terminal exam will happen in, in April or very early May. After that, and within the course, what happens is, you, together with supervisors, choose a topic that you want to research, okay? Typically, you will do that in pairs, and typically, you will decide that, or we will decide that during the November, December period. And there's an assessment, uh, if you like, you must make a proposal, and this is assessed as to whether it's suitable, you do a short literature review then, you explain what you're trying to achieve. We call it a practicum rather than a thesis because it's based on the early MIT model that really a thesis, let's say it's 120 pages, 80 pages of that will really be the background research that you've done. And then there will be 20 pages describing what you're trying to get done and what you did, and maybe 20 pages uh, with bibliographies, etc. So we've narrowed all that down, and instead we ask for a research paper. 
that's 12 pages long. A research paper that is publishable. Okay, so that's the standard we're looking for. And many have been published in the past in, in conferences. So the point really is that this focuses in a research paper. You don't have the space and you don't have the need to write down all of the background research you've done. You must just include it in a condensed form as a literature review, but then you must explain what you get done. And the best way to think about the practicum is that it is an experiment. Okay, that you're carrying out a research experiment. So depending on which major you do, the research experiment will vary, but it is a research experiment. So as such, you will have to set up the research experiment, gather the data that's necessary, run the experiment, analyze your results, come up with conclusions, and then analyze those conclusions and explain them to us. And after you put together the paper, then you have a, a viva voce, if you like, you have a presentation in which you defend your practicum and you are assessed and questioned by two members of staff. Okay, and this is the same for everything, every major. So as you see, it's 30 credits. So that gives us our 90 credits across the whole MSc. Right, so that's um, AI, and this is what data analytics looks like. So there are some overlap between them, but there are also new ideas in, in data analytics, such as an in-depth look at cloud technologies that are required for data analytics, and there is mathematical modeling and computational science. Again, there's a data analytics practicum, again, in the area of data analytics. Then we have a secure software engineering module or major that has less overlap except for CA640, which is research and professional practice. And this is a module that everybody on the major must do. It sets up the concept of research. It sets up the concept of ethics and it looks at the law related to computing and information technology in Ireland and Europe. And this gives you a background in which to be able to do your presentations, get your writing done, understand the ethical constraints associated with your work, and also understand any law that might be associated with your area. Okay, similar structure, two semesters followed by the practical. Now, our new full-time major, as I say, subject to approval, and there may be some change in the structure because it's still going through a process of editing, <coughs> is in natural language processing. So we're looking to have quite a few researchers, including a new professor in the area of natural language processing. So that allows us to take the AI concepts and to add in ideas such as human factors in natural language processing, foundations in natural language processing, and deep learning for natural language processing. And this is incredibly important now, as you probably know, everything from chatbots to information retrieval, et cetera, is now done through a natural language processing approach. Then I said I'd describe the part-time only programs. These may be appropriate, depending on your um, background. So we have a, an MSc in Financial Technology and Innovation. And this is a computing-based um, degree, not a business-based degree. So there are other FinTech approaches, but ours is again, as I said to you, is a fundamentals approach. So it would be quite mathematical and it would have the basis in order to do some really good, deep uh, financial technology approaches. We also have a blockchain and distributed ledger technologies and an AI, which is only delivered part-time and it's funded by what we call Skillnet. Skillnet is an Irish government initiative, which is aimed at uh, upskilling people within the uh, information technology industry in Ireland. 
and allowing them to complete MSc courses part time. And then another similar approach that's used by the Irish government is called Springboard Plus. And for that, we have a graduate certificate in AI, which just is 30 credits and allows people to have a, an initial understanding of AI concepts without having to take on a full master's. And even individual modules can be available under the Irish Government Stimulus Programme. So to look at what financial technology or fintech looks like, the first semester um, includes a fintech financial innovation course and a high tech innovation and entrepreneurship course, which obviously ties together business. And then in the second semester, it looks at aspects of blockchain and data governance. Again, there's a practicum, but in this case, there's a design and a delivery stage. Because it is part-time, you will have two years to complete it. So in the first year, um, you will have four courses, and then in the second year, four courses. Um, and then across the second year, you will complete the practicum. In a similar way, the blockchain and distributed ledger technology is part-time. Um, in this case, it picks up elements of our secure software engineering degree with cryptography, etc. But there's also blockchain scalability and developing blockchain systems. And that all leads to, again, an innovative approach to distributed ledger technology of, um, systems that are around. Now, apart from that, we do have related programs associated with the School of Law, in which we ha have a master's. In this case, it's in data protection and privacy. And that is associated directly with a number of modules from the School of Law, where people from computing who wish to have a more in-depth look at data protection can do it. And then moving on to research, we have our PhDs by research. And as I said, it's a very stimulating environment for research. And in particular, our strengths lie in AI, software engineering, data analytics, NLP machine translation, scientific computing, and computer science. The 50 postgraduate research students work on a wide range of funded projects at both national and international level. And because of this, we, we have very close and extensive research collaborations with companies such as IBM, Google, Microsoft, Intel, and many others. Right across the set of projects that are being done, they tie in ideas such as sensor web technologies as well, cloud computing as well, and modeling and scientific computing. I mentioned that there were research centers um, directly connected to the school. In fact, we have two very large research centers embedded, if you like, within the fabric of the buildings of the school. One is Insight, which is the center for data analytics, which is spread across Ireland into multiple universities, but currently its director is um, one of our colleagues from the School of Electronic Engineering, and many of the staff and the postgraduate students are present here in DCU in the School of Computing. Similarly, as I mentioned, ADAPT, which um, began its life in machine translation and localization, and now really is about content generation and is involved in extensive international collaborations on machine translate, translation and increasingly natural language processing systems. And then we also have a lot of collaboration with Lero, which is the Irish Software Research Centre, and that is really in the areas of software engineering. We have other systems and centres called ArcSim, which is associated with high-end computing, 
And then we also have general software engineering and computer science research within the school. So I'll leave it at that and answer any of the questions that are coming up on chat that haven't been answered before. So I might start at the bottom. And for the entry requirements, do you allow applicants with relevant work experience but who don't have a second class honours? And the answer to that is yes, absolutely. Absolutely we do. Uh, in fact, um, on the part-time programme, um, that happens quite often. And uh, people have been very successful. Um, okay, they're coming in very thick and fast. So let's see. When's the course starting? It's computing data analytics. All of the courses will start based on the academic calendar for this year. So that will be September. Um, what do admission committees expect from candidates application? Insight or key points. The admission committee expect what I, I said there, the requirements, which is second class honours to or preferably to one or higher first class honours uh, in a relevant computing degree and evidence that you have a competency in programming and in mathematics. Class sizes vary based on the major and the overall numbers coming into the um, MSc will be about 200 across all majors. Java developer grasp data analytics concepts. Yeah, as long as as long as you also are happy enough with mathematics, yeah. You will have to learn Python though. Specific date in September. Um, if you Google the academic calendar, I think it's the 15th. Um, I'll be honest with you. I could check that, but I probably don't want to go offline to check it. Is the NLP the NLP course isn't open yet. It has to go through a couple more stages. But the minute it is, it'll be open on the application thing. And it isn't available yet. However, if you apply for the course, for example, in AI, you can switch to NLP when it becomes available. In fact, that's the truth of all the majors. Once you're accepted onto the course, you can change your mind. You don't have to go through a different process. Future prospects, I presume, for AI graduates from DCU. Um, yeah, I mean, the future prospects are incredibly bright. Like there's 100% employment of our MSc graduates and AI has been used increasingly across both the traditional companies and then financial companies. And there we have, you, you probably know Ireland has an incredible software development environment. What do you need for data analytics? The same, good programming skills, good mathematical skills, and obviously a good kind of approach for analysis in general. Uh, opting into research. To get to a research program, you have to get a supervisor. So if you want to go straight from an undergrad to a research program, you will need to contact, get a supervisor, apply, and then the supervisor, if you like, can lead you through the steps. So that's a competitive application process. I don't look after the research programs, but they are all, again, they're all online as well. Internship from the university side. No, we haven't. You see, the problem with the internship is that it can indicate that there's room to do it during your MSc and there isn't. But afterwards, we have an excellent careers guys, careers office, and during the program, they run career seminars that we have very large, um, they've been online, but maybe they'll continue like that. Companies coming in, like over 60 companies come in last year uh, in order to introduce themselves to you. And we have all the connections with those. Part-time jobs on campus, few and far between, I'll be honest with you. We do run some um, programming, uh, Part-time jobs, definitely, and you can apply for them. Um, conversion type programs. Now, we the, the simple answer to that is 
we run a graduate diploma. Um, but frankly, uh, the, the best way of doing that would be to try and build up your programming skills. There are graduate diplomas in, in other universities, but we don't run a specific conversion course for the MSc. Can you do your research program with an internship in a company? Well, to be honest, your research program will involve working with industry. Um, so, but yeah, we have other ones where you can do, that would indicate that you would be doing it part-time and we do allow part-time PhDs. It's a tough, it's a tough role, but we do have a few, yeah. Let's see, yeah. So Kapil asks that at DCU said I can select my major at university. Yeah, but you have to pick one first and you have to, so you have to apply. Let's say you apply uh, to data analytics and you get accepted. Great, you're now accepted into the majors. Then if over the summer you decide to change to AI, then when you're registering, you can change to AI, yeah. Come back to these a bit. Limit to the number of MSc places. Yeah, eventually there is. Uh, like I said, 200 is a, a reasonable limit. Um, specific date, Java developer, class size, course starting. Okay, yeah, so there's a few on those. Um, I, I tell you what, just I can check the academic calendar, seeing as a couple of people have asked me. Uh, we have the, it should be here. The calendar, uh, 22, 23. Okay, yeah. So the start of semester one teaching is the 12th of September. Okay. That allows us to end the semester one teaching on the 3rd of December. And then there's an exam study period. And then you have your exams before the holiday season. Okay. Now, anything else? So a lot of you are asking about key points for the application process. The application process is fairly straightforward in that it's based on your qualifications. So your qualifications will be your undergraduate degree plus your experience. So you have to really have evidence uh, of that experience. So if you say, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm a Python programmer. Well, how do we know that? So you've got to tell us what you've worked on, what you did, etc. Um, if, if for some reason you're not, a, you didn't get an offer for any of the majors, well, then you won't get an offer for the NLP either. There isn't, we don't have a different criterion. Our criterion is for all the majors, you need to have programming, you need to have an undergraduate, and you need to have a mathematical ability. Now, like I say, Pache, in some cases, people did an undergraduate a long time ago. And since then, they've done a lot of work in the industry, and we take that into account. Okay, so one person wants a master's in strategic management or sustainable development. And um, you can get that within DCU, but not in the School of Computing. Okay, you should look to the business school. Okay, hours of lectures a week. So, you know, when I showed you the structure, the structure is four modules a week, right? For the semester. That's four by three. So that's 12 hours a week. Now, apart from those 12 hours, you'll have to do assignments. So you'll have to be in labs. You'll have to do reading and you'll have to do research. But just 12 hours a week. Okay, nice to see people already joining about data analytics. That's nice. 
Now will I go back again or will I just wait? Um, lecture times for each day. Okay, I can't give you the direct times. Um, many of them will be on from four o'clock until seven o'clock, right? Because that used to mean that you would avoid the, the, uh, the problems of traffic in Dublin. But problems of traffic in Dublin exist all the time now. However, it also means that part-time people coming from industry can get off a bit early and come to the um, come to the lectures. Now you might say, oh, four to seven, that's great. I can work all day. Well, you can, but don't expect to do very well in the MSC then, uh, because this is a full-time MSC. And if, you're, if you've got 12 hours a week of lectures, you could easily have 36 hours additional to that in work to keep up to date, to keep uh, up with your assignments and to do research. Okay. okay. Um, I, I don't, I, I am here for academic questions. So I never like to talk about two things. One is finance because the finance office are brilliant and they look after that. Secondly, I don't tend to talk about visa issues because it changes all the time. So we have our own international office. So if you look up the international office, you can email them and they'll help you out with any visa uh, questions. Okay. Anything else coming in? Let's see. I'll flick back and see. Uh, all right. Changing course while registration would be additional. So yeah, that doesn't matter. Um, that, that's not an issue. So like, let's say, you, like I said, AI and you want to change to DA. We won't say, oh, we let you on to AI, but we won't let you on to DA. That's not going to happen. Okay. So don't worry about that. But I would, I would say, you know, have a look at what you want to do in the future what you're most interested in, because that's what you should do. It's not just about, oh, um, at the moment, employment in X is better than employment in Y. What are you most interested in? Okay. Um, no, we don't do interviews, right? Um, quite simply because there are too many applications. So what we do is it's all based on what you upload. So upload, obviously, all your transcripts, make sure they're there. If it's necessary, upload your English language qualifications. And then there's this statement, okay? Now, that personal statement is not for you to say, oh, I really would like to go to DCU. We kind of expect that. What that personal statement is meant to say is, look, this is the programming I've done. In other words, put up a good CV, right? A proper, truthful CV. Because this is a full MSc. We don't run tutorials in programming, okay? So there'll be none of that. We expect you know how to program. And we expect you, as the phrase goes, hit the ground running. Days in a week you have classes. Like I say, typically three or four, never five. What's the acceptance rate? That's a good question. It varies year on year. Um, and at some stage we do close it. And um, in other words, we don't keep it open uh, beyond the point where we feel it's full. So it'd be hard to give you a percentage. Yeah, the job fair at DCU is held annually by the careers office. And once you get here, they will send you links to it. 
They also do CV workshops and they also um, have a range of, of facilities and they're on campus here in Glasnevin. Um, DCU has at least three campuses, four if you include the fact that we have a, an industrial campus as well. But we're in the biggest one here, the School of Computing at Class 7. And so is the Careers Office. I see Matthew's put up the International Education Scholarships for 22, which is great. Also, people ask about scholarships. They are done automatically. The, you know, the, the few that we have within the school are done automatically. They're called merit scholarships as such, based on, on um, your undergraduate results. There are others, but they're the core ones. The third semester, yeah, it's for completing the project. That's exactly what it is. Um, so in other words, it, the idea is that you should work on the project, the practicum all the way through the year, but you'll have an, it, the practicum will have your undivided attention over the so-called third semester. Yeah, selection of topic. So the way it works is that all the supervisors, so we have a practicum coordinator, Andrew at the moment, and Andrew has a, an excellent web page. And on that, he will have a list of all the supervisors and each of those supervisors will have a list of topics. So you have a look at a topic and you say, okay, I'm interested in that. You go and talk to the supervisor. And then between the two of you, you come up with an idea. Or, well, it was the two of you, the three of you. So you find a partner first, find a partner. And then with your partner, you go to the supervisor, right? And discuss the topic. There's always a discussion, right? But we allocate you the supervisor, but you have to come up with the topic with the help of the supervisor. And needless to say, the topics range all across all the majors. Yeah, well, to be honest, uploading uh, elements to your application should be within the, the process. You know, in other words, it is a supplemental item. So you just add it as part of the application process on the uh, portal. Yeah, diversity, we, we're uh, a university of diversity and inclusion. Um, and we are guided by that principle uh, from the outset. We don't have specific um, positive discrimination rules in diversity and inclusion at postgraduate level. We have access programs at undergraduate level. Um, and we have numerous programs within the, the learning modules that we have on diversity and inclusion. The post-study employment rate of all um, MSc graduates is very, very high. It's extremely high. Um, and I wouldn't single out any of the majors, to be honest. Um, obviously, people who are working part-time are already in, in employment, so that doesn't count. But the people who are doing it full-time um, have found work across software companies, consultancy companies are hiring in, in large numbers. Uh, the financial companies, the banks are very interested. And then you have all the international companies are here, okay? So I, I won't start listing them, there are too many of them. But they have their so-called Europe, Middle East and Asian headquarters in Dublin. So there are uh, multiple uh, jobs associated with them. Plus, we have a number of Irish companies um, like Canton AI and Keywords and all that Keywords. They, they've they set up specifically in Ireland in order to get um, talent from the university programs.
Okay, I know I have to be a little bit careful because these are live webinars and they, they're all using this Unibuddy system. So I, I think I, I'll have to close down in about five minutes or else I will bang into the time of the next person. But what I would like to say is the two websites, the, the International Office website and the School of Computing website will answer most of your, your questions, but you can always get me I'm, you know, Renat Dr. Bruggen at uh, dcu.ie. All right, so I might, he says, can you do this? Um, okay, let me close that. All right, um, but, but thanks very much for, for attending and look, it, it is, uh, it's a fantastic course. It's a tough course, but if it wasn't tough, it wouldn't be worth doing, all right? And uh, we, we've had uh, great experiences over the years with students, all right? So take care, Slán agus Bannacht, stay safe, and I hope to see uh, a, a group of you when we're here next semester. Take care.